This week on Waterways. Eco Mariner. The Blue Star Program. And Dolphin Smart. In Waterways, we explore the natural and cultural heritage protected by South Florida's national parks, national marine sanctuaries, and national wildlife refuges. Come along as we highlight South Florida's unique environment, a place of jaw-dropping beauty where millions of people live and recreate. This is a place unlike any other, a place many consider paradise. Along the way, we'll also take a look at the environmental dangers South Florida is facing. Dangers that threaten the beauty and balance of this paradise. Each Waterways episode introduces you to one small part of South Florida's special places, explores what these places mean to our society, and details what committed people are doing to protect it. In this episode of Waterways, we share multiple ways that you, our viewer, can shape the future of South Florida and the Florida Keys. In 1938, while working on a wildlife reconnaissance project in what would become Everglades National Park, future park superintendent Daniel Beard wrote vividly of the park's southernmost waters. The waters of Florida Bay are often placid and stretch off in the distance without a ripple. Heat gives haze to the horizon so that it is sometimes almost impossible to tell where the water stops and the sky begins. At nearly half a million acres, Florida Bay does seem to stretch off into the distance. It is home to one of the largest and most important breeding grounds for wading birds in North America. Much of the bay's shallow waters cover seagrass that provides habitat for recreationally and commercially important fish and invertebrates, making Florida Bay a fisherman's paradise. However, every boat that runs aground, every propeller that scars seagrass, Every nesting area that is disturbed contributes to the degradation of Florida Bay. Anyone who has ever ventured into Florida Bay knows why damage from boats is hard to avoid. It's one of the most difficult areas of the planet to navigate. So it's very, very, very shallow boating area with channels that wind back and forth that are very, very difficult and hard to navigate. Calling Florida Bay a bay is actually a misnomer. It's actually a series of more than three dozen basins, separated by shallow banks with natural and man-made channels connecting them. Even Florida Bay veteran guides require laser-like focus to keep their boats afloat, a challenge that doesn't keep newcomers away. Although navigating Florida Bay is complicated and requires great care, the bay's clear waters and renowned flats fishing draw increasing numbers of boaters every year. Inexperienced or careless boaters can easily damage seagrasses and mud flats with their propellers, churning up sediment and suffocating plants. Boaters that run aground may damage more than just their boats. They can also damage the fragile bay floor and leave lifeless trails that can take a decade or more to recover. What makes this even more egregious is the fact that the entire bay bottom is designated wilderness. It's probably one of the greatest fishing grounds in the world. Beautiful birds, lots of animals, manatees, crocodiles, turtles, everything. The diversity in Florida Bay is amazing. It's the only place in the world where crocodiles and alligators coexist. So Florida Bay in itself is just an amazing place. It's not just for fishing, it's, it's also for viewing, for exploring. The desire to explore such a large and beautiful estuarine environment is understandable. The thrill of fishing world-class flats is undeniable. Luckily, the damage being caused by errant boats is reversible. Education, as always, is the key. The reason Eco Mariner exists is because there is an issue in Florida Bay right now with damage to the resource, damage to people's boats, damage to uh, wildlife and habitat 
And a lot of this reason is just for lack of knowledge. Eco Mariner is a free online education course specifically designed to educate Florida Bay boaters on how to navigate the bay's shallow waters safely and properly while protecting the bay bottom and the plants and animals that thrive there. Developed by the National Park Conservation Association, Eco Mariner was launched on April 22, 2009, Earth Day, with a goal to provide motor boaters with the knowledge to protect Florida Bay's sensitive environment. The course, which takes just over an hour to complete, is designed to help you navigate and test your knowledge of the bay. We didn't want to just put information up there for information's sake. We wanted it to actually translate over to the user. So that was the inception, that was the idea, was to put it online. And then of course we went through lots of different edits and iterations, worked with the community, worked with the Guides Association, worked with the park, worked with everyone really in the Florida Keys community on what we could do to put this together and came up with a really great program called Eco Mariner. 200 people signed up to be Eco Mariners the first two days the program became active. Today, there are more than 900 Eco Mariners. Although this is encouraging news, the number of boaters in Florida Bay has skyrocketed. There are now more boaters on the bay than ever. And, even though most of them have GPS units, it doesn't make navigating Florida Bay any easier. The invent of GPS has really um, opened up a lot of areas for boating, but sometimes it's opening too wide. And Florida Bay is one of those places you cannot navigate Florida Bay with a GPS. And that's the key when you're out there, is you grab a chart, you learn the areas, you use your eyes, you don't rely on GPS, you use your memory. You go out and you look to see what's out there, you look at the islands, you recognize them. And that sort of learning is a lot harder than going out and looking at your GPS and following along a line. To actually know where you are, because if, if you turn that GPS off, most people, a lot of people that are out there, won't even know where they are. If you actually looked up and looked around, all of a sudden it's like, wow, where am I? High tide or low tide? Wind out of the northwest or southeast? Three feet deep or three inches? These are the questions anyone who navigates Florida Bay's narrow channels must ask. In fact, navigating the same channel over consecutive days reveals the dynamic nature of Florida Bay's waterways and its shifting mud banks. I've been out there boating in Florida Bay for about 12 years and I still hover over a chart every day every time I go out there I have I may have a GPS on board and I may know where I'm going but I have that chart there and I'm constantly going to that chart and checking to see what's going on just making sure what's going on you know it could take decades to really learn Florida Bay and you can't just learn Florida Bay with the GPS a mariner solely reliant on GPS is a danger to Florida Bay an eco-mariner doesn't need a GPS. An eco-mariner needs only their eyes with polarized sunglasses, the proper charts, and their wits to safely traverse the bay. Even if you don't go out on the water, if you're a store owner or you know, if you own a shop here in the Florida Keys, your retail, your income is based on people coming down here to enjoy this wonderful resource. So for that shop owner to encourage and be an eco-mariner is just as important as the boater out there. For more information on becoming an Eco Mariner in Florida Bay, visit ecomariner.org. Or keep an eye out for Rob Clift and his Traveling Education Center as they make their way around South Florida spreading the Eco Mariner message. The Eco Mariner website will have the events and schedules of where I'm going to be located. So there's lots of different ways that you can get out and see us. So, you know, come visit us, listen to us on the radio stations, come down to the office, come to different events. If you see us out there, stop by the booth. And if you become an Eco Mariner, I'll give you that shirt. Many things have changed over the last 30 to 40 years, but what hasn't changed is the need to protect the incredible resources found only in Florida Bay. It's time for everyone who visits this magical place to become an Eco Mariner and protect it as their own. I've realized that, you know, protecting a place like this is not just important for me anymore. It's important for my children and my grandchildren. So I've learned, I've got a new motivating factor, and that motivating factor is that I hope that my son and daughter 
get to go out and kayak and fish and see birds in Florida Bay because I don't want to tell the story of the way it was. Visitors come to the Florida Keys to enjoy its natural wonders. The postcard perfect views and the coral reef located just offshore. For those looking to make lasting memories underwater, more than 60 dive and snorkel operators are at the ready to take you to the reef. With so many options, choosing a tour operator can seem like a daunting task. But thanks to a stewardship program developed in partnership with tour operators, the choice is simple. Look before you book for the Blue Star awarded by Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary to dive and snorkel operators who go above and beyond in reef education. Many people who come to the Florida Keys to dive or snorkel may not even realize that they are in a very special and protected place the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. The Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary is one of only 14 marine protected areas in a national system of marine sanctuaries. These sanctuaries were established to conserve our nation's underwater treasures for future generations to enjoy. The Florida Keys are a world-class diving destination. It's, it attracts tourists literally from around the globe. And it's important that while we're visiting and recreating in the Florida Keys, that while you're here as a tourist, that you realize that, that visiting here can have an impact too. And we need to make sure that our tourism is done responsibly and sustainably. The places that divers and snorkelers enjoy visiting in the Florida Keys are mostly the colorful coral reefs, the third largest barrier coral reef system in the world. These corals are as beautiful as they are delicate, and research has shown that divers and snorkelers, whether they intend to or not, can have an impact. How much of an impact often depends upon their experience, as well as the influence of the dive masters and captains that take them there. That is why the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary developed the Blue Star Program. The Blue Star Program is a voluntary recognition program. Um, think of it like a, a stamp of approval from the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary to dive and snorkel operators throughout the Keys who are committed to coral reef conservation, who go the extra distance in their briefings, their dive briefings, um, imparting additional knowledge to the 700 to 800,000 visitors we have to our coral reefs each year. The goal of the Blue Star Program Reduce the impact of divers and snorkelers on the coral reef through education. Through Blue Star, charter boat staff receive training on the sanctuary, the coral reef ecosystem, and responsible diving and snorkeling etiquette, and then in turn, share that information with their customers. All right, guys, welcome out to the Amore Diver. I'm Jacob, I'm the captain. First off, uh, we'll be diving in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. We're advocating proper buoyancy. Through Blue Star, the sanctuary standardized correct and consistent educational messages to better engage the Keys dive community, while simultaneously enhancing visitor awareness and appreciation of the reef ecosystem. Of the dozens of dive and snorkel operators in the Keys, some had been following Blue Star guidelines before they formally existed. For them, Earning Blue Star recognition was relatively simple. We started working uh, with NOAA when we felt that there was a need for a, uh, some type of recognition for the divers that go, and the dive operators that go above and beyond with uh, the environmental training and concerns and imparting that to their customers. Blue Star is a way to salute those operators who are environmentally conscious and who are already incorporating educational elements into their briefings. Blue Star is also a way to raise the bar and encourage all dive and snorkel businesses to incorporate more stewardship and education into their business practices. The Blue Star program is made possible through a grant from Moat Marine Labs Protect Our Reefs license plate program and the Sanctuary Friends Foundation of the Florida Keys. It was developed in concert with dive and snorkel operators throughout the Florida Keys because we felt it was really important, it was critical to have their buy-in and to have their influence in developing this program. One of the most important elements of the program is the Blue Star Briefing. Traditionally, the boat captain gives customers a speech about boat safety. Then, the dive master, or mate, 
will give a site briefing describing the layout of the place they're visiting. Blue Star operators offer a third briefing, during which visitors learn about the sanctuary, reef etiquette, and threats to reef health. Uh, we're really trying to uh, kind of hit home with not killing the corals. Um, we have, you know, hundreds of coral polyps come together to make one piece of coral. Not a lot of people know that. Uh, so it's not just one organism, it's a whole community coming together. So if you're swimming along and you brace yourself against a piece of coral, you might kill 500 coral polyps and that's not something we're trying to do. We do our part, we're trying to get you guys to do your part, not to beat up the reef. Be careful and everybody have a fun, safe dive. During the course of a calendar year, all the crew, staff, mates, captains of a Blue Star recognized dive shop are required to go through a continuing education. Continuing education allows the staff of Blue Star Shops to stay informed of environmental developments, whether it be the lionfish invasion, new information on historic shipwrecks, or when the year's coral spawn will be, and share that new information with customers. Another special component to the Blue Star program is that operators are committed to hosting conservation-related activities at some time during the year. And this could be a reef cleanup, a shoreline cleanup, a mangrove cleanup. It could be participating or, or teaming up with Moat Marine Lab's Bleach Watch program, for example. The benefits to becoming a Blue Star operator go beyond the good feeling that comes with preserving our natural environment there may be a financial benefit as well. It's our way to say thank you, and it's also our way when we have visitors that come to the sanctuary or call the sanctuary in our visitor center when they say, who should I go out with? We point them to the Blue Star website and recommend Blue Star recognized operators. Blue Star operators also benefit from having the Marine Sanctuary's marketing muscle, which promotes the program and its message through press releases, media interviews, and visitor outreach. The Blue Star recognition also gives operators a competitive advantage. People are seeking out green opportunities. And if you've got two dive shops, if you're looking at their websites or looking at their brochures side by side, and you see one that has the Blue Star Committed to Coral Reef Conservation logo, then chances are if that tourist is green, trying to go green, uh, we believe firmly that they're going to seek out a Blue Star operator. Anyone looking to book a dive or snorkel trip in the Florida Keys? Those hoping to leave this environment beautiful and balanced for generations to come? Please look before you book. Look for the placards and decals featuring the Blue Star logo with the current calendar year and make sure the businesses you're supporting support the preservation of the coral reefs. Visit SanctuaryBlueStar.org for a list of current operators. For many people, viewing a dolphin in the wild is a lifelong dream. For others, protecting wild dolphins is a lifelong mission. These two goals intersect on the water in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, where every day charter tour operators take visitors out to observe these marine mammals in the wild, and where scientists and resource managers hope to foster stewardship of these animals through increased education. As the number of visitors to the Florida Keys and the number of visitors wanting to see dolphins has increased over the years, so too has the number of boats taking tourists out to see wild dolphins. Key West is home to a local group of bottlenose dolphins. Anyone visiting the area or anyone who boats recreationally can see these animals um, year round. Some boaters and tourists come seeking a close encounter with dolphins inadvertently assuming that the closer, the better. However, what they may not realize is that closely approaching or irresponsibly viewing dolphins can alter their natural behavior. Close approaches or other disruptive behavior, such as pursuing groups or encouraging bow or wake riding, can interrupt important behaviors needed for the dolphin's survival, like feeding, resting, and nursing. Because of this, disrupting dolphins' behavior is a form of harassment and is illegal under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. And research has shown that over time, stress from sustained tourism pressure can actually result in resident dolphins departing an area permanently. Next time you see a group of dolphins, ask yourself, is an up-close photo worth risking the well-being of these dolphins?
to help educate visitors and residents of the Florida Keys that close is not better and that dolphins deserve respect and a little extra distance, resource managers created the Dolphin Smart Program. The Dolphin Smart Program is a voluntary recognition and education program that educates tour operators on how to responsibly view wild dolphins. Operators that choose to be Dolphin Smart and participate in the program follow a, a suite of program criteria including viewing guidelines and advertising guidelines and also educate their guests on the importance of responsibly viewing dolphins. The SMART in Dolphin Smart is a handy acronym. S stands for stay 50 yards back from dolphins. The M stands for move away cautiously if dolphins show signs of disturbance. A stands for always put your boat in neutral while dolphins are near. The R stands for refrain from touching, feeding, or swimming with wild dolphins. And the T stands for teach others to be dolphin smart. The Dolphin Smart program started here in Key West, Florida. Um, it was a collaborative development. It involved all stakeholders, including the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, the National Marine Fisheries Service, the Dolphin Ecology Project, and the Whale and Dolphin Conservation Society, as well as local businesses, including the dolphin, some of the dolphin tour operators in the area. In addition to viewing responsibly, Dolphin Smart operators are also committed to not feeding or swimming with dolphins. Feeding wild dolphins has become an increasing problem since the late 1980s in many southeast coastal areas. Not only do these fed dolphins begin to rely on humans for their food, but fed dolphins begin to associate the sound of motorboats with food, risking dolphin injury and death from colliding with a boat propeller or entanglement from fishing line. NOAA law enforcement reports also conclude that people are swimming with dolphins, particularly in Florida's coastal areas around Fort Walton Beach, Panama City, Sarasota, Melbourne, and Key West. Swimming with dolphins typically disrupts a dolphin's natural behavior, which is illegal under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Swimming with wild dolphins is very dangerous as well. It's important when you're viewing wild dolphins to remember that they are top-level predators in our oceans. These animals have a lot of teeth. They have been known to bite people. Um, they can injure people because they are very strong animals. And you never know the situation you're putting yourself in. You may be um, putting yourself between a mom and a calf or a, a bull and a female. So you don't want to put yourself in those dangerous situations. If you are in a boat where dolphins approach, first make sure the boat is in neutral, or better yet, off when the dolphins approach. Many times if you cut your engine and don't actively approach dolphins, they may choose to approach your vessel and you have a better chance of watching them engage in natural, normal behaviors. This is a wild dolphin encounter on their terms. This is the type of experience a dolphin smart operator provides. So if you're looking to view responsibly and you want to choose to go with the Dolphin Smart Operator, if you're at um, a local marina or a local harbor, you can look for the Dolphin Smart flag or decals. Those will have the logo on them and the, cor the current year for operators that are actively um, participating in the Dolphin Smart program. You can also visit the Dolphin Smart website and under Who's Dolphin Smart, you can check out who the, the local operators are in your area that are part of the program. It's important to remember that dolphin smart operators are trained to understand dolphin behavior and biology and to responsibly view the animals so they can offer the best up-to-date information about the groups of dolphins that their customers are viewing. One of the business incentives of being Dolphin Smart is that the Dolphin Smart program is a cause marketing type of program. And cause marketing helps your business because uh, people tend to um, either go to businesses more often or give more money to businesses that they know are helping support a cause. So in the case of Dolphin Smart, our operators are supporting wild dolphin conservation. There are a number of economic incentives for businesses to become Dolphin Smart. Press releases, news articles, and web promotion are just a few of the ways Dolphin Smart operators benefit. Dolphin Smart operators also get free education materials including fin identification charts, behavior charts, and activity guides to share with their guests. 
But the biggest benefit comes from business generated by environmentally conscious customers who will only book Dolphin Smart. You know, it's great to have the dolphins here in the Florida Keys, and it's a great experience to come to Key West and view dolphins in their natural habitat. So by encouraging people to book Dolphin Smart and by people responsibly viewing dolphins, we can keep, those, keep the Key West dolphins here and enjoy them for many generations.